This is the top 20 Chase credit card hacks, including an update on the best strategy for increasing your credit limit, how to reverse a credit card denial, and how to earn a larger signup bonus. Number one, Chase can match higher signup bonuses if you notify them within 90 days of applying. For example, if you apply for the Chase Sapphire Preferred card that comes with a 60,000 point signup bonus, and within 90 days, Chase increases that bonus to 80,000 points, then you can call them or send them a secured message, and they will match you to the higher bonus. Number two, you can get the signup bonus on Chase cards more than once. If you look at the fine print on any Chase card, you'll see it say you can get the signup bonus again as long as it's been 24 months since you last received the signup bonus from the Freedom cards and 48 months for the Sapphire cards. Just remember, you can only hold one Sapphire card at a time and you must cancel your card first, then immediately reapply to earn the latest signup bonus. This process is called credit card churning, which means you repeatedly open new accounts to qualify for the signup bonuses. Number three, Chase isn't the most generous when it comes to retention bonuses, but it's still worth looking into a retention offer. A retention offer is an offer that is given by the bank to retain you as a customer, and it usually comes in the form of a statement credit or an increased spending bonus rate. Keep in mind, retention bonuses aren't only given when your annual fee is coming up. Try calling Chase at the 60 day mark and just before or after after the annual fee post. Number four, they offer generous signup bonuses on their checking and savings accounts. Everybody knows the bonuses on their credit cards are great, but the signup bonuses on their deposit accounts are also worthwhile. You can usually get a bonus of $150 to $300 on the total checking account. And right now the bonus is $225. My suggestion would be to wait for the $300 bonus. Better yet, you can actually churn these bonuses as well and get them more than once. Opening a bank account also increases your odds of approval for Chase credit cards, especially when you have a thin credit file. That means you have few or no accounts listed on your credit report. Number five, you can refer friends to Chase credit cards. Chase allows you to refer friends to their credit cards that you hold. The typical bonus is $50 to $100 for every referred friend. Right now, the bonus for either Freedom Card is $100 per referral, up to a maximum of $500 per year. Your friend will receive the latest advertised sign up bonus. Number six, there is no limit to the amount of Chase credit cards you can have. Unlike American Express, you can hold as many Chase credit cards as they'll approve you for. Typically, the limiting factor is how much credit across all cards they will extend to you. The soft limit is usually no more than half of your total annual income. Number seven, Chase will let you change your statement closing date. You can do this by changing your statement due date within your online account. Usually, your account just needs to be in good standing, but but even when you're late on a payment, they will sometimes make an exception. Chase will report your account information like credit utilization to the credit bureaus right after your closing date. For the best possible credit score, it's good to pay your credit card balance before the closing date. Number eight, it's possible to get your bonus points sooner than they would normally post. To do this, you need to finish your minimum spend requirement and then change your statement closing date to be sooner than normal. Once your statement closes, the bonus points should post to your account. Number nine, Chase won't approve you for most cards if you've received more than five new cards in the last 24 months. This includes all credit cards, not just Chase cards. And not all Chase cards are affected by this rule, but most are. This is known as the 524 rule. Number 10, you can view what credit card offers you are pre-approved for online. Unfortunately, this only works for Chase branded cards like the Freedom and Sapphire cards and not any of their co-branded cards. What you can do is once you log into your account, just click on the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner and click just for you from the menu on the left hand side to access your offers. Number 11, you can only be approved for two Chase cards per month. Business and personal cards are considered separate. Applying for three cards in a month is dangerous because there have been reports of others getting shut down from Chase and having their accounts flagged for suspicious activity in those situations. Number 12, if you're denied for a credit credit card, call the Chase Reconsideration Department. Sometimes there is a simple reason as to why your application has been denied by the automatic approval system. Calling reconsideration gives you a chance to speak to a human and turn that denial into an approval. Your main objectives should be correcting any errors on your application, directly addressing any flaws on your credit report, and emphasizing all the features of the card that you really like and find valuable. Those features can include bonus rates, balance transfer, 
transfers, statement credits, and travel partners. Number 13, the best strategy for increasing your Chase credit card limit is applying for a brand new card and reallocating your limits to the card that you use the most. In the past, you need to speak to customer service to do this, but Chase is now offering customers the ability to customize their credit card limit allocations online right after opening a new card. Number 14, there is a minimum credit limit on all Chase cards of $500. If you want to transfer credit limits when opening or closing an account, then keep in mind you need to keep a credit limit of at least $500 on each card. Number 15, Chase can expedite your cards with one to two day shipping. You just need to ask them first. If you need your new lost or stolen cards in a hurry, just call Chase and request that they expedite them. There shouldn't be any extra charges. Number 16, Chase will usually refund the annual fee on a card as long as you cancel within a statement or two of the fee posting. If your annual fee posts and you accidentally forget to cancel, you can usually get a refund as long as you don't wait too long. The rules can change based on what card it is though. And if you're getting value from this, please hit the like and subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this one. Number 17, Chase allows product changes or downgrades, but only within the same brand for the most part. For example, you could product change the Chase Southwest Premier to the Chase Southwest Plus card, but not to the United Mileage Plus Explorer card. However, you can downgrade a Chase Sapphire Reserve card to a Sapphire Preferred or a Freedom card since they all earn Chase Ultimate Rewards points. Also, you must have had your card for at least 12 months before you can downgrade it. Number 18, a Chase credit card that has been closed out can be reinstated upon request for 30 days. So if you change your mind and decide you still want the card you canceled last week, then you can reinstate it and pick right up where you left off. Number 19, if you have auto pay set up with Chase and make a partial or full payment during the month, then they will automatically adjust your auto pay amount so you don't over or underpay for that month. Number 20, asking for a credit limit increase will always result in a hard credit pool with Chase. If you ask Chase for a credit limit increase on any of your cards, be ready for a hard pull to be done on your credit report. Earning an automatic credit limit increase is the only way to avoid a hard credit pull. And there are a few key ways to improve your odds of triggering a automatic limit increase, which I discuss in this video right here. Thank you for watching and you have a good one.